here's what we're doing, okay? So uh, there are a lot of ways we can do this, but the way we've chosen to do it tonight um, is uh, we feel like there are two sort of different um, categories of, 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 of work in the room, okay? We think that there are people who get paid for their work, and we think there are people who, who work but don't get paid for it. But we think that all of it is worship, okay? And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to divide you all up tonight by those categories, okay? Uh, and so in, in our family, you know, in my family, um, you know, I get paid for the work that I do, all right? Uh, but but Reese works harder than anybody, okay? All right? So she's getting paid for it, but uh, the work that she does uh, is incredible, and she uh, honors God the way that she does what she does. So I, I want to just sort of divide us up in that way. Uh, I think we're going to try this. I think the Janelle is going to um, is going to lead the group that is uh, the group that doesn't get paid for their work, uh, and I'm leading the group that gets paid for their work. And so those of you that get paid for your work, we're going to stay here. And those of you that don't get paid but work really hard, uh, you're going to go with Janelle. Uh, all right, sound good? All right, so let's, well, let's make um, that move. Get just... All right, look, so I'm just going to try and, and walk through this tonight. Um, let me just say this. So we've been talking about, about worship for over a month now. Um, and tonight is really a unique conversation because it's... it's... So in, um, we are in an era right now that... that that scholars, the scholars would talk about as they call it the postmodern era. Okay, so some of you've heard that, others of you haven't. Don't worry about it. Um, but uh, one of the things that's true of this era is that um, is that we sort of live in what we would call a, a deconstructed world. What does that mean? What it means is that um, so if you can imagine this building, okay. It's obviously constructed, it's built, it's together, it's one building, right? Um, but it's almost like, like being in this building and not seeing it as together, not seeing it as built. It's as though you are sitting here and, and instead of you seeing a built, constructed, together building, you're sitting in the room, and all you are seeing are like two by fours. You see like the sheetrock as something else. You see the windows as something else. You don't even see it as built. It's it's deconstructed, even though it's actually constructed. Does that make sense? You, you kind of follow me? All right. So so um so in our world right now, the way we see life, the way we see our own lives, is in a deconstructed way. And what that means is basically you and I, we think, we believe this lie, this distortion that of the truth that um, somehow you being in this space tonight and being uh, at church tonight, part of this church, is somehow like totally separate and has no connection to how you parent your children. And that has no connection to how you uh, handle yourself at school. And that has no connection to like whether or not you pay your rent on time. And that has no connection to like what kind of neighbor you are. And has no connection to like the phone conversation you just had. You know what I mean? And has no connection to like the text message, you know, the conversation you just, you know, engaged in like three hours ago. Like everything is deconstructed. They are not connected. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's how we see our world. But that's not true. That's not how God sees us. And it's not how God sees our world. God sees everything as constructed. He sees everything as together. He understands how everything sort of works in harmony. It's how He designed the world to be. But that's not how we are seeing the world today. And so consequently, what's happening is that we live these very fragmented lives. And so you see people who do not have any sort of integrity. It's what we call character or integrity because... It's like, man, I see you here, and you're like this person, but then like over here, you're like that person, and then over there, you're like that person, and like so when I deal with you at work, like you, like you don't tell me the truth, but then over here, like 
you know, you're like, you know, Miss Perfect, and then like over there, you're like, I mean, so, because there's just no, we don't understand that everything is connected. It's all, it's the same. It's all related. So you make a decision over here at work, that totally affects the rest of your life. That's going to affect, ultimately, you know, whether or not your rent's paid, whether or not you're going to keep a job, it's going to affect, uh, ultimately, um, you know, kind of the, 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 uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The um, reputation of you and your family that's sort of out in the community that your neighbors hear about. You know, and then all this stuff starts circling. You live long enough. And all of these things start circling around. Enough circles start touching each other. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Where like, you know, somehow somebody knows you who knew that and then they saw you over there and there was that and then this and that. You know, they had this interaction with you and now like there are enough circles that sort of touch each other and now uh, they start influencing each other and you keep trying to push the circles away and you go, no, that's not true. That's not how it happened. No, that's not what, what the way it is. No, that's not, you know. And you start, you keep trying to push the circles away and say, no, none of these things have anything to do with anything else, but they do. They're all related. So, so, so our worship is, um, uh, through our work, is not this separate thing that's like, Oh, I get paid to do a job, but my job is not in any way an expression of my worship because I worship God at church. Or I worship God at home. Or I worship God when I'm on my break and I go to my car and I turn on my worship music. But like then I, but then I clock back in, I turn off the worship music, and now I'm back at work, and that's not worship. It's deconstructed. You see what I mean? That's not how God understands us. In the very beginning, right, Genesis chapters 1 and 2, right, God creates Adam and Eve, right? And, 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 and one of the first things God does, He puts Adam to, to work, right? Yeah, we're talking about work. So, you know, so He puts Adam to work. But He did put him to sleep. You're right. I mean, you know, like, right, right. But, but He puts him to work, right? He puts him to work. Now, did God sort of check out? God kind of checks out, right? And He's kind of like... You know, okay, Adam, I'm about to give you something that means nothing to me. I don't care about. It doesn't make a bit of difference which name these animals. Um, you know, just just tell me when you're finished so we can get back to doing the stuff that I want to do with you. Is that God's attitude and posture toward Adam in Genesis one and two? No, because the way that God designed us, right, is that we would work and that our work would be part of and would be an expression of our worship. We have deconstructed all of this. You see what I mean? Okay. So so there's this phrase, there's this phrase, um, Opus Dei. Opus Dei. It is, it is the work of God, or to say it another way, all of creation's true work. So in Isaiah, and in the Gospels, and in the Psalms, uh, you'll read of God's Opus Dei. You'll read of the way in which He has designed creation to sort of work. You'll read of the trees in the field clapping their hands. Mm -hmm. You'll read of the rocks who are, who are positioned, their posture to, to cry out and to worship God. You'll read of, um, of how uh, the depth of, our, of creation is crying out to the depths of heaven. Mm -hmm. Deep cries out to deep, right? And so, uh, and so this is the way that God has intended for all of creation to work. And then there's, then there's us. There's humanity. There's, there's human beings and how we work and how we are designed by God to work. So tonight, I think, uh, there are a lot of ways to get in this conversation. Uh, but I think, first of all, I'm going to just sort of present some stuff. And then I want to interact around this stuff, okay? Um, I need a timekeeper probably. So maybe Bree, you're probably the best person to do that. Uh, I'm going to read Colossians 3. It's, it's from the message. These are all the message translations. But go ahead and, and pull it up if you have it. And you don't have to if you don't. It says, um, He is your life. So if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue those things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from His perspective. We've got the time to learn how to do that. Yeah. It says, your old life is dead. 
And when I lost my magazine, my old life really was dead. Mm -hmm. And the dying of your old life, like finding out you won't be able to work again, that is a death process. You actually go through a grieving process through that. And it's okay. Grieve. Grieve. I lost Janelle, the career woman. I, I lost my status car. You know, I, I knew I was going to have a Benz or a Beamer. And I already had picked out my personalized plate. But it was gone. No, I'm serious. I really had. I knew what my plate was going to say. But, um, Janelle, no, don't try to interrupt me. But you, you could work again quickly, but you can work again because I'm going for it. I'm going for it myself because I went to get my uh, bachelor's degree. I've got that. I work. I'm working right now. I'm working over three to four years for this. to get my PhD. I've got all the other ones. Mm -hmm. and, and that's and yes, what I'm going to say. I'm still working, but you know something? I don't want to get paid for it. I want to teach other people. Yeah. That's what I want to teach other people. This is basically, does that sound really crazy? I want to teach other kids to basically, and a girl I share it with, and um, she's also a minister herself, teaches kids how to stay out of prison. Mm. Mm -hmm. Praise mm -hmm. God. That's good. They do. I actually do that now. <laughs> That's what I'm working Which on right now. I would have never done before. We have a school, my friend Leslie and I, four kids that have dropped out or been kicked out of high That's school. That's what I want to do. And um, we volunteer. Nobody is going to pay us to do it, but it still needs to be done. And that's the point of our worship, even through volunteering. There are things that need to be done that the government, that an employer, a corporation, will never find any value in, but it still needs to be done. Yep. Right. And yep. we can do it. We have the power. We're in that position. And sometimes we have these visions God has given us for our life. And the only way we know how to make it come to pass is the way the world tells us to. Well, if God is showing me I'm going to do this, then I must have to go to school so I can get my degree in this, or I have to do something so that I'll qualify, I have to qualify somehow, or I have to be legitimate somehow, so I need to meet all of these requirements, and then once I get my PhD in seven years, I'll finally be able to work for God. No. But no. There's you can do way. it right now. Yep. That's what you I'm know, doing. you might have a vision of being with sick people and your mind translate that, oh, I must be a nurse. But you don't have to be a nurse to go sit with someone who's sick, to pray yeah. for them, to lay hands on them and see them healed. You don't have to be a nurse to yeah. do that. Yeah. God has given you a plan. He has a plan for your life. <laughs> and he has a vision for your life. Don't try and make it happen on your own because you'll blow it up. Mm, yeah. Yeah. You'll blow it up. I saw myself speaking, and I would have probably figured out how to do that and made a business out of it and lectured and had people pay me or whatever. <laughs> and I thought I was walking away from those visions, and then Phil asked me to preach somewhere, you know? <laughs> and it was just like, wow, God. <laughs> you know, just the season of getting to know who I am, and these are all advantages that we have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One thing I'm doing, as far as my P, the thing I'm going to school for now, so I'm going to Modesto in, in uh, December, right? I didn't want the answers. I wanted the verses so I could study myself. Her husband gave them to me. I was supposed to be here one night to meet him, but he was coming so late. And this young lady over here came up to me the other week, and said, last week he was handing me the paper. Yeah, that Phil gave me to you, yeah. Mm -hmm. I thanked this lady, but I told my wife about it. I says, Pastor gave her the papers to give to me. I got a lot of respect for these ladies here. Okay. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. But um, how do we know our purpose? How do we know what we're supposed to do? Um, Colossians 3, verse 2 says, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. You know, we need to have our minds focused on heaven. What is it that God wants for us? Yep. And yep. then, how do we know what that is? You know, it talks about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. So it says in the Word, we can know what God's will is. Yeah. But it comes from having our minds transformed. Yeah. So how do we transform our minds? Keep them focused on God in heaven. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much 
the answer is God even tells us what to think about in Philippians 4 it says you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things that are true that are noble that are yes. reputable that are authentic yes. that are compelling that are gracious thinking about the best and not the worst the beautiful and not the ugly things to praise and not things to curse put into practice what you've learned from me what you heard and saw and realized do that in God who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Mm -hmm. We let God reset our minds. Yeah. He has to reprogram our identities sometimes. He has to heal our hurts. We have to give some things up. We have idols yeah. sometimes that will be in the way of us and God. Mm -hmm. And God will show us what those idols are, but it's up to us to say yes. Yeah. One of my idols I found out was my husband. And God says, you have to love me more yeah. than you love him. You have to want me more yeah. than you want the career, than you want the respect. You have to want me more than you want your mom to love and accept you. Yeah. And yeah. you say yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I okay, one, one more thing I do every morning. I just say this. Hey, do take only 30 seconds? Because, you know, sometimes I sleep outside. Mm -hmm. I wake up, I stretch every morning, and the one thing I do is thank God for the day He woke me up. Yeah, amen. And I say good morning, because we all have them, and not too many people, we all have angels. I say good morning to my angels, because I was in jail, one of the jail psychiatrists came to me one time and says, do you hear voices? I look in dead in the eyes and says, do guardian angels count? He kind of laughed. He says, I believe in the two, don't pray about you out here. <laughs> All right, so um, are there any questions we can discuss? I like to talk. <laughs> um, did you just give him that one scripture, the Colossians one? No. There's, there's actually three. There's Colossians 3, uh -huh. 1 through 17. Yes, ma'am? There's Romans chapter 12. And there's Philippians 4. Those chapters are all about the Christian lifestyle. Mm -hmm. What it is and the things that, honestly, that we have to walk away from and give up. There's a whole list of things that you're going to have to step away from if you're going to walk this walk. But every single one of them is worth it. God doesn't tell us to walk away from sin because he doesn't want us to have fun. What, what would you say to those of us who are, so we're obviously all in this room together because we do not get paid for the work that we do. Mm -hmm. So what if we are putting in applications though, what if we are, you know, updating our resume and um, just trying to get a job somewhere, what do we do in the meantime? What do we do while we are waiting? Help other people who get their blessings. Yeah. Help other people pray, pray. Because God's going to bless you. Because I was in a circumstance just this last week where basically I was in the hospital. I got sick and I'm still suffering for it right now. My mom called my wife because my mom can't call me. I found out today. My mom, because she doesn't want me on the street, she is sending me some money so I can get inside. Mm -hmm. I got my blessing from my own mom. Okay. So I can't work. I'm sick right now. I'm suffering. I'm talking about four different medications. I'm still here. All I got to do Tuesday, Wednesday, is go to the post office, but yeah, I get the check. I'm going to deposit. I'm going to, she says, take your son out. Take your son off the No, I changed my mind. I'll give my son and his wife some money. You take your wife out to dinner. Okay. I don't want to go. That's yeah. his wife. Take her out to dinner, not me. Okay, Eddie, I'm going to have to stop you so other people okay. get a chance to talk. Hang on, um, Tucker. Debbie, you look yeah, like you've got just a lot on, <laughs> on your mind. mind. I know, I was going to say that too. Get on your spirit. Yeah. Um, and this is, this is a perfect place to just share. Well, uh, it, a year ago last July, I worked for the post office for 16 years. Wow. Wow, that's a long time. And one day I was at work, and bam, I had a stroke. Right in the middle of carrying mail, I had a stroke. Uh -huh. Changed changed my whole life and of course my husband is was an abuser so of 26 years he abused me and somehow during that recovery of the stroke the way he was treating me and the way that everything was going 
you know, I was taken away. Mm -hmm. I, I was mm -hmm. put in another hospital, I was taken away. And then I ended up at Marjorie Mason, which for six months. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm on Social Security Disability. I have worked ever since I was 15 years old. I've never been out a job. Mm -hmm. I've always had a job, it, either with the post office or before that with the school district. So I've never been without a job. And um, all of a sudden, bam, I had no job. I had no money. I had, I had a home. That was gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a vehicle. That was, everything was taken away from me from mm -hmm. July until September. Mm -hmm. During that period, everything was gone. And it and, and it's it's I'm on social security <coughs> disability now plus my retirement from the post office, but it's it's so hard for me to sit at home. Yeah, you know, That's and you living know. alone is hard yeah. Yeah. to get used to again. Mm -hmm. Where before, even though he was not a husband, there was somebody in the house with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it's right now I'm going through a difficult time. Mm -hmm. Very, yeah. <laughs> trying to adjust to not working, mm -hmm. trying to just being on my own, trying to to find out what my relationship with God is. Yeah. Because it feels like he's not, God is not talking to me. God is not communicating with me. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a rock mm -hmm. in front of me and God. Like God's here and there's a rock. And I'm trying so hard to get over that rock yeah. and I can't. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, been there. Have you asked him what the rock is? Yes, <laughs> and uh, many every night. It's just, you know, it's just, you know, why am I not feeling, why am I not feeling your presence? That's my biggest question. You know, I come here, I go to church, and I pray a lot at home. I read my Bible at home, but I just, I, I think it's what, I don't remember what his name was, just in service, uh, Michael. When he said, your heart, yeah. your heart cannot, your heart cannot, what is it? Your heart cannot melt. Your heart is hard. And and that's that's what it is right now. My heart is hard. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to, to take that away. Yeah. Ask God to soften it. I have. <laughs> yeah. I have. But maybe I don't have enough faith mm -hmm. for, to do that. You know, yeah. I think forgiveness is a big part too. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and it it may be. I mean, I like like you said, Janelle. In your quiet time with the Lord, He brought up your ex husband, and you had to forgive. Like you didn't even realize that you still hated him. So I think for a lot of us, we that rock is in between us and God because there's unforgiveness in our heart, and we may not even know. Who it's towards, we don't. Even, we may not even remember what the offense was. We remember the amount of pain that was caused, but we don't remember exactly like all the details. Well, he did this and then said that, and then, so maybe there's unforgive. I know for for me personally, it has been unforgiveness in the past. It has definitely been unforgiveness, and so I mean that's something that we'd love to pray with you about. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. yeah. Walk, walk you through that. You know, it's just it work do our best unto God and not unto man. So if we're working unto the Lord, that means even at our job site, we are not looking toward man to give for man's praise. Mm -hmm. We're working unto the Lord in whatever we do. Good. That's great. How do we increase, how, we, how do we uh, establish a healthier rhythm of work and abiding? God, how would we do that? One way that, I, that I've learned that I implement on a daily basis, um, it says in Psalms 116.9, the uh, New Living Translation says, and so I walk in the Lord's presence as I daily live here on earth. Mm -hmm. So I take that word walk to mean that as I walk from the time that I get up to the time I get up again, that I'm in God's presence. And because I'm in God's presence, that means that He's always with me and He's seeing everything that I'm doing. Regardless to where I am or what I'm saying, whatever, He's, he's right there. So when I'm at work, 
because I'm in his presence, because I'm walking in his presence as I live, he's always there, so I'm keeping communication with him always. And when I'm doing my job, I'll actually hear him say, now, is that really the way that, that I would do that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you know, and it's, it's, it's like, oh God, yeah. you're here. <laughs> you know, so it, it kind of like keeps, it keeps me in check. You know, because I, I meditate on that word, you know, and so I walk in the Lord's presence as I live here on earth. You know, so what everything that I'm doing, it's about worshiping God. You know, whether I'm throwing my hands up or whatever and just keeping that, that constant relationship with Him. And it's even like when I'm sitting down trying to read the word and I feel sleep trying to come on and it's like, you know, hey. It's good. Bible says that too much is given, much required. I want to sort of push this a little bit. You all, we, in this room, have so much that God has given us um, and that we have a job that pays us. Mm -hmm. there, is a, there is opportunity with that. But there is also, um, uh, there's also some sacrifice in that. Um, I am, uh, Tim, Pastor Tim, uh, Psalm 116 and 9. nine. So some of us may want to sort of jot that down and, and begin to sort of, um, you know, read that consistently. Um, is, is, is our worship through the work of our hands, is it, is it worship anymore? If, if when we come home from this paid job, um, that we just sort of crash and knock out, and say to our children, say to our roommates, say to our friends, say to um, our spouse, uh, our family, uh, if we just sort of say, hey look, I just work, you know what I mean? I'm tired, um, I'm done, you know, um, you know, look, I'm the one that makes the money, you know, just you, you know, just do whatever you do, um, but I'm, I'm done. Um, you know, so I mean, is that, is that sort of, approach and view of our own work is that worship for God no. right so we're gone come on in come on in so we're gone come on in so we're gone that creates then this other opportunity though um, we then need to steward the rest of our time apart from our work really well so so I because I don't have the flexibility to choose some of my hours and days, um, you know, I need to then steward this other time really well. I need to have deep roots with my family. And because I'm at, I'm at work 40 or 30 or 20 or 60 hours a week, you know, that means that when I'm not at work, because I can't foster deep roots with my family when I'm over at Target or doing whatever I do. You know what I mean? I'm working. I can't, that's not the place, the best space for, me to, for my roots to grow deep with with my family. I can't do it there. It's not possible. And, and if they try to show up and hang out with me at work all day, then I'm going to get fired. So I, mean, that's, that doesn't, I can't do it there. So when I get home, I've got to, I need to, because if I end up then having shallow roots with my family, shallow roots with my friends, mm. shallow roots with my children, right? Then is our, then are we worshiping God through our work? No. No. So, uh, is that everybody? Is everyone back? Racy, is everyone back? Yes. This is everybody? Yes. Great. So, we're just wrapping up. Kim is, is coming up. Uh, um, the one thing I'll say is Kim's coming is the way that I have begun to live in rhythm, and it's not perfect. So, we have to find our way to reestablish a rhythm so that our roots can grow deep. Um, is... That I have begun, for me, I have a lot of appointments, a lot of meetings. So in between each and every meeting now, I now, whether I'm driving, walking, riding my bicycle to the meeting, wherever I'm doing, I begin now, I used to make phone calls during that time. I used to send text messages. I used to send one more email. I've stopped that. And now I'm, I'm setting aside time. I'm praying now on my way to the meeting. I'm talking to God. I'm not even, I'm not even praying about the meeting. It might be, it might not be. I'm just spending time with the Lord. It's rhythm. Prayer, meeting. Prayer, meeting. Prayer, 
meeting. I'm trying to live into the rhythm, the dance of the seraphim. Um, and so this is where we are wanting to go. Kim, go ahead. So I want to just open up this time. I know we are in two separate groups, but just maybe one person from each group just kind of share something maybe that stuck out to you and or a way you felt challenged um, by maybe something you've learned. Or So I just want to open that up. <coughs> Give the other group an opportunity to hear. I would, if you don't mind my saying. Yeah, and if you could say what group. Uh, we were in the working group <coughs> okay. where we get paid to work, okay. shall I say. Yeah. Uh, just listening to uh, the the words that were given by Pastor and the few illustrations, it's like uh, the scripture that came to my mind in our group was, uh, I believe it's in Acts 27 where it talks about, in him I live, move, and have my yeah, being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which means that it's a, it's a every moment it's a every moment thing and even at even though I'm, I'm on my job um, piggybacking off of Sister uh, Priscilla, you know, everything I do, God is watching me. And uh, me being a child of God should be the best uh, employee there. I should be a good steward over my time. And uh, I'm, th I'm there to work, give my, you know, give my eight hours, nine hours a day. And then also take time, you know, to give him thanks because you know, I've learned through the years not to complain about my job. I thank him for the job that I have to go to, you know, every day. So it's basically kind of, you know, the work and then the thank you, Lord, and then the work and then the thank you, Lord. And you're going back and forth, so staying, you know, and connected uh, into, in that. And also with being a supervisor, I've got to lead in a godly way. You know, and, and and everything that I do in word or deed, you know, I do it all unto the Lord. So <coughs> that's how I stay connected. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Somebody else from the other group, the non-paid, want to share maybe something that stuck out to them? Yes, mm -hmm. Reese. So um, <coughs> we have learned that our identity is not in our place of work or a place of employment because we don't have a place of employment. <coughs> we have um, the opportunity to um, to be available, to be God's hands and feet, and go wherever he tells us to go, and say whatever, whatever he tells us to say, and be whoever he calls us to be, um, and, and really just spend our time with him, with other people. Mm -hmm. um, so we have the flexibility um, to bless other people, whereas I mean, we don't have to ask our boss, hey, is it okay if I go and visit my uncle who's in the hospital so I can pray with him mm -hmm. and expect him to come home with us? Mm -hmm. Like, we don't have to do that. We don't have to ask, is it okay if I take so-and-so to the grocery store to get their groceries for their family? We can get, we can just do that. Um, mm -hmm. So we've, we've learned to um, be grateful for the in-between time because there are some people in our group who are looking for employment mm -hmm. but who are... Um, not complaining during this period while they're waiting. So. Good. Yeah. Thank you for well, I've had the opportunity to get paid for my job, and now I am and another opportunity to not get paid for my work. And um, I think one thing that has remained consistent that I want to encourage you guys in, there's some scriptures that I want to point you to, is that um, everywhere we are is a gift. Yeah. And it's something that God has given us. And I don't mean like money. I don't mean... I mean like our time, our talents, and our treasures, and our time, whether our time is spent at a place that pays us to be there, yeah. or whether our time is spent with some, our uncle who is struggling through something, or our neighbor who comes over and asks for, I don't know, some eggs, what our neighbors ask for, you know, so I think that seeing that we are stewards of our time, and it's our responsibility to steward that well, I mean, that goes back to what you were saying, we're children of God, we need to, to, um, give that back to him of our resources what are our resources that God has given us whether our, we get paid to use our resources our gift of leadership at our place of employment where we supervise others or over our gift of leadership over our children that is a resource that God has given us and we're responsible for stewarding that well yeah. um, time talent and treasures so that could be whatever your money that you get from working 
how are you giving that back to God? I yeah. mean, it's all his anyways. He's paying you for something that he put you in place to do. Yeah. Um, you know, and whatever treasures you have, maybe from the skill of your hands that you get to produce and not get paid for. Um, so that's one thing. And then another thing, too, is it was really shared in the, the session where we don't get paid is our, our struggle with identity. Yeah. And um, the scripture that God has brought, I think, me through the last couple of years as I've transitioned to a place of employment to um, not getting paid is John 15, 1 through 5. And yes. I don't know if uh, uh, Pastor Phil actually shared that, but he was talking a lot about abiding, which is also remaining. I just want to read that. I think it's um, super <laughs> powerful um, as we think about where God has placed us. So it says, I am the vine, this is Jesus. Mm -hmm. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts yes. off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. Mm -hmm. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Yes. For a branch cannot <coughs> produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and it cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Mm -hmm. So wherever you are, you have to abide in Christ, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So when I was um, getting paid for my place of work before, I, my identity was extremely wrapped up in what I did. And I was so fixed on the fruit of what my job was supposed to produce. And I was, I was thinking about, I don't know, whatever task I was, what fruit that would look like. And I was thinking about the fruit of that. And um, I wasn't abiding in Christ. I had it backwards, right? So I was trying to enjoy and display the fruit. Mm -hmm. um, and that comes last. Like, that's a byproduct. Yeah. Uh, Phil said, you know, your roots are deeply, yeah. roots grow. That's where they get their nutrients. That's where they get their, um, the water. That's where they get everything yeah. that yeah. goes up into the tree, produces the branches and the leaves and the blooms, and then the fruit. Mm -hmm. And it takes a long time sometimes for fruit to, I mean, how long does citrus sit on the tree before it is good enough to eat? Um, so I want to encourage you, like, wherever, wherever, yeah. wherever, wherever you are, you're getting a paycheck or you're not, that you have to abide in Christ. Other, you're, you're missing it. Yeah. You are totally missing it. Yeah. Another thing I was challenged with is that God cares more about you yeah. Yeah. than your ministry or your occupation. Yeah. It does. It, it, you will sometimes get fixed yeah. on what we can produce or what we look like or that yeah. God values that. Like we want, we think that he wants us to offer the fruit, right? Uh -huh. Like, so he thinks, God, I want to give you my whatever task this is. I want, yeah, I want you to give that to him. But first we give ourselves. That's right. Uh -huh. Okay, we give That's our, right. we yeah. give ourselves yeah. and That's say, right. God, yeah. do you even want me to use that? Yeah. Do you yeah. want it to lay dormant for a while? What is it you want me to do? And how can we do that if we're not abiding in him? Yeah. We're just going off our own thing. Yeah. So, um, so abide. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's a lesson I think we all have to learn, um, but hopefully we don't have to re repeat that mm -hmm. a lot. Um, abide, abide, abide. He said you cannot bear fruit unless you abide. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, we go through different seasons. I believe that God takes us through different seasons, bearing different fruit. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's grafting a tree onto us to yeah. produce other things. Mm -hmm. um, that's good. That's good. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, I think, I mean, this, this note I was sitting here, I was thinking, like, I think if you come home, if you are, uh, whatever you're, whether you paid or not paid, doesn't matter. If uh, if you were just, like, wore out, exhausted at the end of at the end of your days, um, I think one of the key reasons that could be is because you're not abiding in him throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so so you so for those of us that get paid for our work and we leave our home to go to the work, you know, I, it may be because you actually you actually don't connect with God for a whole eight hour period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and so you come home, done, drained, exhausted, wore out, and so, uh, but that but that's not just for that. I, mean, I think it's for anyone in any. I think if you are wore out in your day, I, I think. We need to lean into this to this word you're sharing. Yeah. yeah, and I think that from my experience, that boils down to a lack of trust huh. for me. <laughs> okay, so you, so for what I have learned is, God, I don't trust you to bear the fruit of my life. Yeah, I have to do it. I, I have to run yeah. myself to, to the, the ground. ground. Yeah, come on. Because I don't trust you enough to produce the fruit that, number one, you're calling me. Okay, he's called you. Yeah. He will equip you. And yeah. He will give you everything that's needed to produce that fruit. Yeah. So so when I am tired and I am 
cutting minutes short, like just giving myself just enough time and then I'm stressed out yelling at the kids to get in the car because we're going to be late for church because yeah. I didn't give myself enough time. Yeah. It's because I didn't trust him. I'm like, yeah. I've got to get this done. Yeah. No, I don't have to get that done. What's my number one responsibility? Yeah. Abide. Yeah. Abide, yeah. abide, That's abide. That's good. And for me, I have learned it's a lack of trust. God, I don't trust you to produce that fruit in my life. So I have to take the wheel and I have to run myself in the ground. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So um, I just, I mean, that is hard. And That's the word, good. if you take it back, it's remain. And it's not like, oh, I'm just going to be a little, it's not like, oh, remain when the sun is shining and the yeah. wind is like a nice breeze. It's when things are difficult. Yeah. Remain. Yeah. When yeah. things are hard, remain. Yes. You don't see a way that how your project at your job is going to come through, remain. When you feel like you have to work so many hours over time to pull through, That's remain. Good. When your kids are driving you nuts, remain. When yeah. you watch, <laughs> I'm serious. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you feel like yeah. you have to, I mean, honestly, the biggest thing. breakthrough in my parenting is when I kept my mouth shut yeah. at my kids and <laughs> said, Lord, help me because I can't do yeah, this without you. Really and then right. something else will surface, and I'm like, okay, that's what it was. It wasn't what I thought I needed to fix. It was something else. So, and then, um, so abide, trust, and then um, I'm going to close with Romans 12:1, and it says, "Offer." Oh, okay, excuse me. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead, not just like, okay, I think this is a good idea. Okay, no, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all He has done. Not because it's a good idea, not because we think it's a good idea, because of what Christ, because what what God has done for you. Mm-hmm. Let your bodies be living and holy sacrifices, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is the true way to worship him, mm-hmm. to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice yeah, right. by mm-hmm. abiding in him. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that it, um, yeah, just abide wherever, wherever you are. Um, and that fruit, that fruit will come. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you get paid for it, and sometimes you don't. I've mm-hmm. learned too, like I, I'm, I mean, no bias about getting paid because we all need money. Like yeah. we all have to pay the bills. But there is a sense of freedom that God has brought. Maybe it's through the process of learning my where my true identity is from. Mm-hmm. But um, that mm. money paper is not my reward. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. is yeah. the fruit that God yeah. has calling me to produce yeah. you know and so you know try and think about the people that you work with I mean there are specific people there that God has planted yeah. for you to cultivate Christ in their life yeah. you know they're not going to go to church but they got to go to the DMV yep. you know what I mean exactly. and they, they have to go to I don't know That's wherever good. you guys work but you know um, yeah. and it, it's being available abiding and you're going to miss those opportunities we will miss those opportunities mm-hmm. if yeah. we are not abiding in Christ and we're so task focused um, not that you should be diligent in your work mm-hmm. because yeah. That is also a great example of who God is in our life, but that again, abiding comes first, and things like diligence and time management should be a byproduct mm-hmm. of our abiding in Christ. Yeah. Wow. That's so, um, That's so yeah, I just I, I want to close with that, and um, you'll do yourself a favor. I'm still learning to abide in Christ. Um, yeah. If you're not working, you get what you gotta do is you got a time schedule like I do myself. I get checked once a month. I think I got certain things I gotta do I space them out. Mm-hmm. That way I don't get stressed out. Yeah, that's that's a good thing in a headache. You yeah. take care of things on a timely manner. So therefore you're not gonna stress yourself out. And that's and that's another thing. I get a paycheck once a month because I'm on social security. Okay? So I do get a paycheck, but I don't get a paycheck mm-hmm. for that way. If you don't want to stretch yourself out, take whatever you got to do and space yourself out during the period of your work week and take care of things one at a time. Anybody else have anything they want to share with us? Yeah, Isaac. I just wanted to see if you could repeat the last thing I said about diligence work. Yeah, so that that isn't, like we should be focused on, like that is important, right? Be focused. But abiding in Christ is still, I think, more important, and diligence and time management and excellence should be a byproduct of your abiding in Him. And so I think sometimes we get it backwards. 
So like if you are so, I relate to this very well. I can find a task and I can work and work and work and everything else in my life will suffer because I'm focused on that task. Including my relationship with the Lord. So if I am focused on the Lord and abiding in Him, then self-discipline, time management, diligence is a little bit more balanced in my life and it should flow out of my relationship with Him. So, um, and I am learning that, and I have learned that the hard way. So, um, yeah, that's that's what I felt like God had for me to share. And we'll close in prayer, and then we'll do. For I'm gonna have you. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, let's do a couple things, but don't go far. I'm gonna have you do exactly what you were gonna do. Okay. okay. So, um, uh, one, I just wanted to um, to share. I, I don't know if Gabe. Or Kamika, you know, if y'all want to share a little bit about what y'all uh, have done tonight, you don't have to, but I just want me just want to create uh, space for that. Um, so I don't know that we've all had a chance to see mm -hmm. or even fully kind of understand what what you were doing and, and why it sort of took the form that it did. So uh, I don't know. Y'all interested in sharing anything about that tonight? You don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, um, so yeah, I just kind of felt like um, I just felt like God was saying to um, a lot of us has been silent and like we don't talk to Him, oh. and I really felt like God was saying, "Wow, just talk to me." Mm -hmm. Wow. And so um, yeah, I kind of did like a universal sculpture or whatever, and then I didn't create a mouth, and um, I put no more. Wow. I'm not gonna be quiet anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I just feel like when we're quiet or when we're silent we began to deteriorate. Mm -hmm. And um, before, there was a picture of my father up, and that was something that my father struggled with. He was quiet, he didn't speak. And I saw my father deteriorating, like in his faith. And so um, so during worship, whatever, I just began to like think about that, but also um, I just felt like I was saying, let them know they don't have to be quiet anymore. Like, wow. just mm -hmm. tell them to talk to me. Wow. And so, like, for me, my worship changed. There's wow. times where I sit in the car or I sit in my closet and I just cry. Yeah. But I know that's worship. Yeah. Yeah. Or there's times where I'm like, God, help me. And that's worship. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. God, I just want us to talk to Him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 You know that his grandson was going to be like that, his, mm -hmm. his first grandson, and so um, basically put my hands down on the table and you know told me how to move them, when to move them. Bought me this extremely hard art book, like for like you know master's level art, Leonardo da Vinci type stuff like that, and <laughs> told me to draw it. I mean, I didn't get the practice test or none of that stuff, man. He put put it down and, and had me draw it. it. Didn't it never came out as good, but he taught me how to. Taught me how to use my hands. Taught me how to train my hands in a way to where okay. um, they, they'd be useful. And I mean, for years, like I shared, my, my hands destroyed things. You know, I mean, even though God blessed them and, and kept them with me, um, you know, I was in a gang. I did drugs. I hurt my family. I hurt other people. Did a lot of things like that. And it's just amazing. Like God has brought me back full circle using what it is that He, what, what, what. I'm not going to say the devil, but just what, what sin and deterioration of the body could have taken yeah. away, God chose to perform a miracle. Mm -hmm. And so when I was asked to do this, I was like, I, I'm not a not a fast drawer. I'm very methodical, very slow. I, I critique myself very hard. So mm -hmm. I've been looking at it all night long. I'm like, God, I see what I did wrong. But <laughs> the thing that came out was that, um, is that I, I wanted to do a, a kind of an evil in my own style. I have my own style and uh, strength and Isaiah 40. 31 came as to me and said, uh, um, But those who trust in the Lord will Come renew on. their strength. Come on. Uh, they will soar yes. uh, on wings like eagles. Yes. They will run and not grow weary. 
that will walk in our faith. And I, I preached last Sunday, and I just was like, I was so tired, I was so broke. Um, you know, my I just I didn't know what I was gonna say, even though I had everything I was gonna say. <laughs> and I got up before God, and, and, and I got up before everybody, and. Right before I started to preach, God told me, do not grow weary in doing good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just a reminder that, yeah, you know, I do this. I needed to hear this because I, I need to rest. I'm the guy that that gets through an eight-hour day and realizes I didn't spend any time with God. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, yeah. it's my abilities, and it's yeah. my back, and it's my strength. And I go home, I'm exhausted and stuff. So it's just, this is a great, the word worship came to me too, so I just kind of scribbled it on there. And, um, wow. It's just a reminder that there's just, I mean, just... Just strength, and that's what Gabriel means. That's what my name means. That, wow. that God is my strength. So just a reminder that if I'm tired and need to remember, I'm not living up to my name. But I'm not living up to who He's called me to be in Him. So Come thanks. Now you guys are tired. Thank you for letting me share just a little bit about that.